In this video, I will show you how you can install floor sheathing if the joists aren't lining up because they're lapping over a floor beam, or even in some cases connecting to a floor beam with joist hangers. And you can always get rid of the lap by lining the joist up. They can usually break half on a four by beam where the minimum bearing distance for the joist is going to be an inch and a half. But I don't like to do that. I like to get the nice connection you're going to get by nailing this lap together. And you will too by the time you're done watching this video and you see how easy it is to make the plywood sheathing work. So let's go ahead and install our first row of sheathing that is breaking half on the joist and centered on these joists. And you can see here where this break here is on the center and so is this one over here. Next up, let's go ahead and install our next row where we will be moving over four feet and again, breaking half on the next joist. And of course, you can see where we're going to have a problem right here. If the break over here for this next one here, if we break it on this joist here, we move it over four feet and this joist isn't long enough, then we're going to need to just simply add an extender board. And you can add the extender board over here or over here. And if you want to use a smaller board, which is what I would want to do, you're going to want to add the extender board over here and then have the next gap between the pieces of floor sheathing centering on this joist here and not this one. And to give you a better idea what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and add the next row of floor sheathing if we extend it from here, keep it lined up with this break here and on this joist, then we're not going to be breaking half on these joists here. But again, with our extender block, we shouldn't have a problem. So let's go ahead and add this extender board here. Take a look at it. We can nail it with 16 D nails. And I would imagine staggering them 16 inches on center will be fine. Maybe two at the end, two over here, or simply stagger it like I have it here. And believe it or not, something like this might require a structural engineer's detail. So don't be surprised if the building inspector asks for a detail if they're not familiar with this. Let's go back up to the top here. You can see where it's breaking half on and lining up with this break here. Let's go ahead and pan out. I'm just going to add these as necessary. And you can always move it over to use a smaller piece. And then we're simply going to move this row here over an inch and a half. So this is not going to be lining up with this one here. And this break here will not be lining up with this break over here. So you might be required to use a shorter or longer piece of floor sheathing here. And the same would hold true on the other side. And that's really about it. It's not that difficult. Again, the brakes aren't going to line up and there's no need for the brakes to line up. You don't need to add additional support boards and I wouldn't suggest using them if they're not necessary. So again, this brake here isn't lining up with this one over here. If we remove the floor sheathing, you can see where we don't have a problem here. And we're not going to need a support board here. We're just going to need one here because our brakes aren't going to be lining up. So don't get confused and think you need to add a whole bunch of these support boards when you don't need to. Most of the time, you're just going to need them where the joist lap over the beams. And hopefully this helps. If it does, let us know in the comment area. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment area also. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.